In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 22 through 26, where I'll ask the question, how should the Lord's servant behave? Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 22 through 26 says, So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth. And they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. Paul is encouraging Timothy and letting him know that there are certain things that he needs to do if he's going to be the Lord's servant. There's certain behaviors and character traits that he needs to develop if he's going to effectively participate in leading the church of God. And this is something that anybody who's interested in ministry, really every believer should pay attention to. We should pay attention to how Paul guides Timothy in the way that he is supposed to behave as the servant of the Lord. So here are three thoughts from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 23 through 26, answering the question, how should the Lord's servant behave? Thought number one, flee passions. We need to flee from the youthful passions that so frequently cause us problems. And I don't think that we really need to delve into all the different passions that might be categorized as youthful passions. We sort of know, default, what are the things that you desire that are worldly when you're young, Here's the big long list. These are the things that we, as believers who are seeking to do the Lord's work within the context of the church, these are the sorts of things we need to put aside. We have to recognize that the manner of life that is worldly is usually what youthful passions are all about. So we need to flee from that. We need to flee from that and instead seek that which is of eternal, intrinsic value. Thought number two, pursue godliness. Paul tells Timothy, pursue righteousness, love, peace, faith. All of these things are godliness. And this is what we need to pursue. Instead of pursuing our youthful passions, we need to pursue that which is godly. And as we pursue that which is godly, that which we know from the text of Scripture are the character traits that are pleasing to God, that he seeks for us to develop, are always reflective of him and his own character. That's what we need to be working on instead of working on things that are satisfying in a temporal or worldly sense. We need to seek that which is godly, pursue it, develop righteousness, develop love, develop faith, develop peace as our primary characteristics, as our primary values. And as we do so, we find that we're going to be able to serve the Lord in more effective ways. We're going to be able to bring more glory to God. We're going to be able to enjoy him better and better. And we'll find that we're able to care for his church and his people in superior ways when we aren't ruled by our passions, but instead are pursuing godliness. Thought number three, create peace. We have a responsibility to create peace in the world. And this is something that we should really focus on in our everyday interactions. We should focus on how we can create peace. Now there's a couple of different things that have to do with peace. The first thing that has to do with peace is we have to be able to get along with one another. But we also have to be able to get along with our Heavenly Father. So we seek to correct people, but do so in a way that they can handle. Do so in a way that they can actually hear. And this is what Paul is telling Timothy. He's saying, you need to communicate to those who are your detractors. You need to communicate to those who disagree with you. You need to communicate to these people who are your brothers and sisters in Christ in such a way that you're not causing controversy, but that you are peacefully correcting them. Now, this is not an easy thing to do, because the second that you go about correcting somebody, they almost always want it to turn into a conflict. They almost always want it to turn into a fight, because after all, aren't we telling them what's right, telling them what's wrong, telling them the things that they specifically are doing that are incorrect? This is why it must be done in a peaceful way. And when it is done in a peaceful way, then the correction might just take hold and they might just turn from that wickedness and return back to faithfulness in Christ Jesus. This is how we can develop as servants of the Lord. 
by fleeing our youthful passions, by pursuing godliness, and by creating peace in our different circumstances. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of 2 Timothy chapters 1 and 2. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group, Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.